When have you experienced sexism as a man? Viewer edition. Story one. I was walking to my dorm and a couple was arguing about God knows what, a male and a female, and the conversation was getting more heated by the second until the girl threw a punch. I watched as she continued to smack and beat the crap out of him, but he wasn't doing anything. I had enough of it and was going to stop her because I was thinking, he's not going to stop her. I was so wrong, because before I had reached him, he grabbed her wrist and punched her in the nose. She started crying hysterically and noticed me just standing there. She ran up to me saying, call the cops. I looked up at the man and his lip was bleeding. She was, re she was reaching for my phone when I smacked her hand away saying, if you think that you can beat the crap out of anyone, you better be prepared to get the crap beaten out of you. She proceeded to scream at me for not helping a fellow woman and I just laughed. She went to slap me for laughing at her and I caught her hand. I told her to stay away from the man and to steer clear of me. She walked away all peed off and I made sure that the man was all right before I went back to my dorm. Violence against people like that isn't okay. Um, and man, if you're being hit by a woman, another man, non-binary, it doesn't matter. You do not deserve to be being hit. Uh, unless you're attacking them with a knife or something, like if they're defending themselves. But yeah, no, that is not something that should be allowed to happen. And unfortunately, uh, it does at times. And yeah, no, no one should have to take physical abuse. Story two. When I was nine, one of my also nine-year-old cousins hit me by accident. She seemed really scared and concerned, but I said, it's fine, it's not like I'm going to hit you back. After those magic words, she just started laying into me harder until it was a full-on assault. When I told my mom and uncle, everyone just laughed at me. After an hour of being her effing punching bag, I decided enough was enough and just uppercut her stomach. Everyone was peed with me, and the only one who wasn't was my father because he asked me why I did it. He never scolded me, and that's when my eyes were opened to the blatant double standard of the world. Now, folks, I will say, there is a much greater history of men being violent towards women. And so I'm not excusing it. This is not excusing, but this is understanding where some of this stuff comes from, you know? And I think that's a tough thing for society to shake. Uh, you know, in reality, it's a complex, nuanced issue. No one should be hitting anyone, really. And I mean, self-defense, if you can just get away and get someone to protect you, that's best, but no one was helping you out. I don't know what's right or wrong. I really don't. Violence in any way is not okay. I just, I wanted to get out because I'm sure more of these stories are going to touch on this, but some of this stuff I think is things kind of swinging back the other way from a history of women being the ones who are much more highly discriminated against and oppressed. And so as we swing things back for equality, maybe some stuff is going too far the other way. And I don't think that's healthy either, but I'm just trying to understand where things are coming from. Again, it's not an excuse for these behaviors, and I don't know the solutions to any of this, um, but hopefully people smarter than me do. Story three. I'm a man and complained to my female boss that another male manager would try to play weird nipple poking games with me. It happened on multiple occasions and was incredibly uncomfortable. My boss initially failed to respond to my complaint, so I accused her of S discrimination. Any female complaining of unwelcome nipple poking would be taken seriously, but nope. Story four. When I was told a woman can't abuse a man, that's impossible. Men abuse women, not the other way around. I'm sure you can guess how that relationship turned out. Story 5. I worked with a small young woman who would laugh about the way she could mistreat her 6'2 football player boyfriend because you know he can't fight back. And she was shocked that we all told her how horrible that was. I believe she truly thought it was cute. As I said, she was young, 18 or 19, so I hope the reactions of her coworkers made her rethink her relationship and grow up a bit more. Story six, equal rights, equal fights. Just because a man hits a woman, it doesn't automatically mean the woman's being abused, especially if the woman is beating up a guy. A man has a right to defend himself. A woman has a right to defend herself. Everyone has a right to defend themselves. Gender shouldn't play a role in who gets to defend themselves.
Story 7. Not a man, this is about my father. Context. My dad was a European doctor who was enlisting in a Northern Australian Indigenous Communities Hospital, so he was the new fancy white male doctor. My mother was from a rural Aboriginal community. She would frequently try to fight her family and try to kill her aunt with a knife. My mother and father were always on and off, whether it was self-termination threats my mother would make or the warnings my dad's colleagues gave him, he left her. He ended up having three children with her, and the custody battle began. It was supposed to be a losing battle, but due to the court system, they kept prioritizing my mother. She was physically abusive towards my dad and my siblings and was a pathological liar. But despite that, people's minds were set on, this white man is trying to take that poor woman's children, despite him being visibly physically abused and never saying a word, fearing it would make it worse. She kept taking my dad to court, forcing him to get a lawyer every time, and never even showed up. She was fortunate that there are incredible services here that support women in court. She nearly never had to pay a single dollar. Men aren't so lucky in abuse cases. She sucked my poor dad so dry that we were so broke we slept on a mattress on the floor with candles. My dad spent money on candles because I was terrified of the dark, because we couldn't afford electricity. It wasn't until she quite literally kidnapped us for several months and tried to run over my dad with a car that the court decided she was unfit to take custody. Love you, Dad. The double standards on abusive relationships towards men is unfathomable. Anyone reading this who's going through this stuff, please reach out. You deserve to be treated better. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I recall stories like this from the video where we got these comments from uh, when I originally did it, where there are men who are not getting custody and very abusive, toxic mothers are getting custody because of this just default of, well, the mother's the better parent or something, you know. And that's just so heartbreaking because these kids are getting put in terrible situations, maybe dangerous situations. And I know courts can be overwhelmed and overworked, but this seems like something that's worth really genuinely looking into and not just assuming that the mother's going to be the better parent. You know, when kids' well-beings are at stake, you don't just make these generalized assumptions. Story 8. As a child, me and my little sister would get into arguments frequently. These arguments would turn into fistfights, and even though my sister was in the wrong half the time, my parents would punish me all the time. So I learned to just take the punches, scratches, because I didn't want to get my butt beat. Turns out she would tell all her friends that she's able to do this to me and get away with a slap on the wrist, so whenever they saw me, they would laugh at me. But now that I'm older, my parents magically forgot this ever happened and deny everything. Story 9. One time some Karen called the cops on me for taking my then four-year-old niece to the park. When the police arrived, I tried to explain that she was my niece, but they just wouldn't believe me until I called my sister to explain how she left her daughter with me. Never been so peed in my life. Story 10. Here's what my mom told me. If you ever have a girlfriend who treats you horribly or abuses the power she has because of society, leave her immediately. If you have a house with her, don't leave by car, just pack your things and go on foot. You can call the police, but it might backfire horribly. You know damn well I'm taking that advice. Story 11. Not me, but my dad. One time when I was much younger, me and my dad were walking in public when a woman glared at my father for a few moments. Then she walked up to us and said very rudely if that was actually his son. My dad has black hair and a slim face, Italian English, while I have brown hair and a round face. My mother has these traits, English, Irish, German. Male children often get most of their bigger features from their mom. The audacity of that bee. Story 12. My ex lived in my apartment for months rent-free. We talked about her getting a job and contributing to rent, electric bills, groceries, anything, and she agreed. Throughout our time living together, she quit every single job she ever got within a week and started getting mad at me whenever I told her I couldn't afford something she wanted and for not liking the things I got her when I did have money. She also got mad at me for having a job and leaving her alone every day, and for the fact that my job meant I was doing better than her. Apparently, we were in a competition that I didn't know about. Six months and $16,000 in credit card debt later, she broke up with me and continued to live rent-free for another two months, and somehow I'm still the bad guy. I will say I don't know if this is necessarily... um 
rooted in any kind of like sexism or a double standard necessarily. I feel like if a woman was, you know, supporting a guy who was doing this to her, it would be, you know, we would be just as similarly outraged, I would hope. Um, I just want to comment on this because this is a situation people find themselves in and you find yourself thinking that, well, no, it's my partner and I love them and, you know, like, oh, they're having a tough time and you want to support them. And it's good. It's good to be supportive and to try and help them out. But there is a not so clear line. Maybe you need to talk with friends, other people who are close to you, but where your goodwill is being taken too far and it is taking advantage of you. It's abusive to you. And if you start worrying about stuff like that, I'd recommend you talk to someone because it's not a great situation to be in, I promise you. Story 13. Girls, we want equal rights. Also girls, gets a guy sentenced to jail for punching her out for self-defense for killing his son and cutting off his fingers. Story 14. I was at a restaurant with my wife and two brothers-in-law. We had a great time and left the server a generous tip of about $30. Apparently, a lady overheard that my wife and I were going to split the bill and proceeded to tell me that I was a cheap butt. I simply responded, I'm sorry that you're incapable of paying for yourself. Her husband, boyfriend, father, or whatever, was trying to hide his smile and she was glowing red. Story 15. I got in a fight with my older sister when I was about 19. It got so bad that my parents got involved and told me that even though I had a good reason for being angry, that I was the one who would have to apologize purely because I was the guy, so I don't have as strong emotions about it than my sister. Needless to say, this only made my anger worse. Story 16. I was having a conversation with a group of friends and the subject of marriage was brought up. A rather leftist friend of mine said that she was considering marrying an old rich guy and taking his money when he died. Wait, so men are just being exploited for money? I asked, somewhat annoyed. She went on a rant about how that's the only way for women to take money away and whatnot. My response, something along the lines of, I sure love being told that I'm morally inferior based on my gender, was followed by a second or so of silence and immediate change of subject. Another friend who was also present at the time later said something like, You know, most liberals are also fighting for men's rights, don't you? I was like, yeah, guess I haven't met any yet. I consider the exchange a peace offering. Oh, and another thing I've noticed when hanging out with this group of friends is that women can be incredibly aggressive. None of them have tried to cause me bodily harm yet, but some of them sure like implying that they will. And I don't want to call their bluff because I'm afraid someone might get hurt. I feel like you're making some assumptions just based off of the, like, select group of people you hang out with and, you know, the uh, leftists that you're with and whatnot. I I myself skew a bit to the left. uh, Certain people have easily figured out. And I know plenty of people who are fighting for men's rights and real equality and can address issues with nuance and stuff like that. So, I don't know, broaden your horizons. Try and talk to some more people. Um, You know, it's why I include uh, takes like this and stuff that I don't necessarily agree with because I do want to make sure that I'm at least somewhat listening to the other side and trying to take in as much information as I can. I don't know how successful I am at it. I don't know how it affects me, but I feel like I'm trying to do a fair shake and I encourage other people to do the same. Story 17. I had a geography teacher who is at times rather sexist. This girl that was sat next to me would take my stuff, no lessons, and each time I tried to get it back, the teacher yelled at me for taking her stuff. It only stopped because the girl felt bad for me and stopped doing it. Story 18. Every freaking day. Men don't cry. Men don't say no to intercourse. When I feel awkward for smiling at a child while walking past a playground. When I feel awkward for walking on the same side of the road as a female stranger my age at night, briefly crossing paths with her. There are so many examples of everyday sexism directed at men. The good old, you're not a man under six feet is another classic. People assume I'd pay for a woman's food, even when she's my older sister, even at frickin' McDonald's. Like, taking a date to McD, but trying to be classy? Not saying we got the short end of the stick, but it's ridiculous to think only women have a problem with sexism. 
Oh, I also hate when people, especially mothers, say a baby's father is babysitting today. It's his effing child, too. Also, when everybody involved in the planning of a wedding basically only talks to the soon-to-be bride, flat out ignoring the man's wishes. Story 19. One night at work before we closed down, I stepped out for a smoke and saw a young woman crouched outside next door to our shopping, also smoking. As I was sitting across the road, I became convinced she kept looking at me, and since I'm a skinhead wearing an old army fleece, I didn't want her to think I was a creep, so I finished my ciggy and went back to the shop. As I passed her, I politely said, good evening. Nothing else, just let her know I wasn't a perv, just a regular guy. Her immediate response, and I quote, was, Walk on. Don't ever approach a woman who doesn't speak to you first. Walk on. Obs, I can't convey it here, but no one had ever spoken so hatefully to me in my life. I was shocked. I just walked on in silence and told my boss. He went out after me for a smoke himself and stared her down till she got scared and went inside, his way of saying, F you. I'd never dream of hurting a woman. It still confuses me to this day why she was so aggressive. My only guess was that she'd been arred or harassed and was wary of guys, but even so, I was horrified that someone would be so openly scared and enraged by a complete stranger just trying to be polite. There's something that someone told me once, and that's don't take it personally if a stranger acts hatefully towards you because you never know what they've been through or how recently they've been through it. Because maybe that person had gone through some form of assault, maybe multiple times. Who knows what that person had been through? Might have happened earlier that night, and they were there just trying to emotionally recover, something like that. And it sucks to have someone address you in this hateful way. I mean, I'm a big friggin' teddy bear for the most part. But yeah, if I, I've had people... Like, you know, see me coming as I'm walking down the sidewalk when it's starting to get dark out. And, oh, yeah, there's, you know, woman stuff. And I'll see her switch to the other side of the street. And part of me is like, I'm never going to do anything. Why would you do that? She doesn't know me. She has no idea. And even if I acted friendly, sometimes it's the people who act friendly and, like, try and say nice stuff that are trying to throw people off guard. And I know that that's, you know rare but it happens and people's defenses get up they get scared they just react but they're reacting not to you but to their experiences and their perceptions and so i wouldn't take that stuff too seriously unless it is going to genuinely affect your life in some way i mean there's nuance to all this and i've talked way too long so i'm, I'm gonna stop i'm sorry story 20 I am a female, but I usually get mistaken as a male due to the way I dress and how my hair is, and I was playing with my small sibling girl in the park, and I can just barely comprehend how many dirty looks and remarks I got from all the older moms and just adult females there. Also, I'm six foot two, so it boosts the assumption even more. Edit. Figured out I'm trans. I'm a guy now. I always was, though. I just want to throw in a quick, good for you, man. I'm glad that you're able to discover that about yourself, and I hope life is treating you well. Story 21. I'm 17. I've been working as a babysitter for the past three years, and I've made a good name for myself in my neighborhood. I'm babysitting different families throughout the week. We had some new neighbors, and my mother decided to go talk to them about my services. She forgot to mention I'm a male, though. When I met them for the first time, their initial reaction was, You are a babysitter. I had various recommendations from the other neighbors and showed them. They said they'll talk to me when they decide. They didn't hire me and got a 17-year-old girl from my school for the job. This girl brought her boyfriend over and had intercourse in the living room while completely neglecting the kid every time. Eventually, the kid broke his arm because he was doing parkour in his room completely unsupervised. The neighbors fired the girl. When I learned about it, I reminded them of my services. They ignored me again. They got another girl from my school, they still have her, and I'm pretty sure she is neglecting him too from all the cries I've been hearing recently from their house. Story 22 That first story I have something similar except my father was, at first, giving custody of me and my younger siblings. However, the homeless hostel refused him as he was a man, then they gave my mother a house with spare bedrooms as she said she had kids. This led to social workers, same ones that said in court it's better for kids to stay with mother, decided my father was unable to look after us and we should be given to our mother instead. She was a raging alcoholic and a legit schizophrenic. 
I refused and was placed in a group home for last six or so months before I turned 16. That's legal age for living on own in UK. And then was placed into a homeless hostel sharing a flat with 40 plus year old career criminal that had serious drug addictions. And I got no financial support from the government as my mother was receiving child support money in my name. Was then told to go back to my mother's house if she was so bad, then she wouldn't have got custody. That led to me ending up shoplifting so as to feed myself. At the same time as this, a 16-year-old girl was in this hostel. She had two meetings a week with support workers. I didn't have one. She got help getting her benefits, government support sorted. She was placed in her own flat, as was a risk to place young girls with older. On top of this, she got upwards of 100 pounds a week from social workers, the same social workers that refused to help me. My father ended up getting his own house. My mom turned up one night, attacked him. She phoned police and my father was arrested because she claimed he hit her. In retaliation, I might add, he didn't, I seen it. He then asked for her to be arrested. Cop's reply was, women don't get arrested for domestics. Story 23. My neighborhood has communal mailboxes on every street. A few years ago, I, 20-year-old male at the time, went to go get the mail. The actual mailbox sits on the front lawn of a house on the edge of the property. The family house property the box was sitting on were in their front yard kicking around a soccer ball. A child, maybe around five or six, accidentally kicked the ball towards me. He runs toward the mailbox where I was, grabbed the ball, and very politely said hello. I said a quick hi back, and the mother came full tilt sprinting towards us and snatched her son up by the arm. She shot death glares at me and proceeded to scold her son on why he shouldn't talk to strangers. Half of me thought it was a good lesson, but the other half thought she was going over the top. It got really bad when she loudly proposed the possibility that I was a pedophile that would kidnap him and he would never see his family again. I felt like a monster. However, it didn't take long for the rest of the street to hear about this and come to my defense. My other neighbors know me very well. I'm the guy that tries to help around when I can. The family ended up moving because they became the buttholes of the community and everyone treated them poorly. So, I know I said before about the one, like, you know, don't take it personally uh, and get offended when strangers react like that to you. But I feel like in that situation, that is definitely taking things a little too far. Like you're out in broad daylight in a neighborhood where everyone can see you. And th that that's that definitely feels like too harsh of a reaction. Again, I don't know where there's like a definite line for this that uh, but. I do feel like a line was crossed there, and we maybe need to lighten up a little bit there, folks. If it's broad daylight, things are safe. Don't, don't overreact. Story 24. My ex got mad at me because my ex-fiancé had messaged me. This fiancé had cheated on me, so I had no need or want to hear from her. I told her to never contact me again, and it made no sense why she even messaged me because the dude she cheated on me with was her new boyfriend. But anyways, my ex got mad that I talked to her instead of just blocking her, but in the meantime, the same ex had kept contact with an old fling as a plug. Like, how are you going to be mad at me for talking to an ex when you're still in contact with someone you smashed? But she claimed I was more in the wrong because I was engaged, but her fling was only a friend. LOL, yeah, okay. My first love came back in my life, and I left that poor excuse of a female, and I'm now married to an amazing and lovely woman I've loved since I was 15. Story 25. I forgot to shave once, and I was at the train station. I admit I wasn't in my best attire that day. My train was 35 minutes late, so I was waiting in the main hall while leaning on my bag. A kid was playing with a ball, and after kicking it with too much power, the ball flew in my direction. Since behind me were the rails, I stopped the ball before it surpassed me and gave it back to the child. Out of nowhere, this woman, her mother, I suppose, comes to me furious and screams to stay away from his child or she'll call the authorities. Okay, woman, next time I will let the ball and probably your son fall in the middle of the rails while you chit-chat on the phone. Story 26. School has always been sexist towards boys in my district, so one day we speak out against it and boom, my teacher, I was in sixth grade, says, you know boys can't be discriminated against, right? So I said, yes, they can. Think about it. The school system is designed for girls. So she says, 
How? So I listed so much that the entire female faculty, there was only one male teacher in the entire school of well over 20 female faculty members. Her last comment she stammered out was, you need to be more of a feminist. The same school banned all the boys from going to the bathroom during bathroom breaks without a warning after the first two offenses of two boys, and the girls would make fun of us, and the girls also never got banned from the bathroom. Story 27. There was one time in my life I legit believed that I was somehow a pedophile. It took me years to realize while I was babysitting my nephew that I just generally enjoyed taking care of kids. Later, when I was spending my summer in a summer camp for underprivileged kids, where you get all sorts of advancements really, there are even rules for us not to spend any extra time with the kids outside of the programs because they might get too attached, I confirmed that I just have really strong parental instincts, which I am now proud of. Story 28. Here's a tip for lads in abusive relationships or relationships with bipolar women. If they start attacking you, block their strikes rather than retaliate as if the police get involved, They'll take her side, but in the station, they'll see injuries on you and none on the woman, so the logical solution is she was the aggressor. Ideally, you would also get the F out of that relationship, but that's not always an option for some people. About the people assuming you're a pedo because you went within 15 miles of a child, there's nothing you can really do about that other than ignore them. Also, here's a story of mine if you're interested. Was sat in class talking to a friend when this girl was being excessively loud, so I asked her, Hey, name, can you talk a bit quieter, please? I can't hear friend's name. And naturally, she told me to F off because teenagers. A few minutes later, I asked again in roughly the same way, and instead of insulting me, she just punched me in the face with a smug butt smile. I turned around and kept talking, and she was all, ha ha, you can't do crap to me because I'm a girl, etc., etc. After about a minute or two of this being punched every two seconds, I eventually turned around and connected a nasty hook to her jaw. Naturally, she started screaming and bawling, and the teacher went off on me. My mate stuck up for me, but I was still punished way more than she was. From a young age, men are taught we're inferior resources in society. I'm not sure I'd agree that we're taught that we're inferior resources. Um, I, I At least I was never taught that. Um, but I was taught that, you know, when I was growing up, you don't hit girls. You never hit girls. In this situation, I don't know exactly how it played out, but giving her a hook to the jaw seems like it might have been more than what she was doing to you, but I guess I don't know like how hard she was hitting you, stuff like that. But, I mean, my reaction first would have been to like go to the teacher first and be like, this isn't okay. And if the te like... <sighs> I know, folks, you have to defend yourselves, and again, this is a thing where I don't know the, the line. There's nuance. Every situation's different. If you needed to in this situation to defend yourself, I'm not going to try and judge too harshly. I don't know. I wasn't there. But I will say, look for alternatives if you can, folks. Story 29. Generally, I've experienced the notion that all men think about is intercourse. Not true for me at all or any of my friends. Two instances. One, it was my homecoming night. I asked someone, but they said no, but that doesn't matter. And about three quarters of the way through, my friend was accused of stalking the girl he likes. Obviously, he didn't. But you know how many believed him? About maybe four, including me. You know how many took her side? Maybe 20 at the very least. Two, so for some context, I tend to give hugs to my friends. Normally, they'll be okay with it, but some friends who aren't are perfectly fine with hugs from other girls. It breaks my heart that they're like this. It breaks me even more that they aren't aware. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.